Hello, this is Ryan Riccatelli with ASNews.net and the Kiteboarder Magazine, and we are here at the Surf Expo 2008. I've got the man, Lightwave Dave. Thanks, Ryan. Been, nice to see been friends with Dave for years, and uh, it's great to see you at the show, and you're showing off all your 2008 gear. Yes, sir. we got uh, three new lines of boards and two new lines of kites. So we are uh, been stepping it up on all the R&D this year. We actually do a lot of R&D in Mauritius. And um, had a good month-long trip there with all our distributors and came up with some cool designs, I think. Well, why don't you take us through the boards right now? OK, well, this is what we're really working on in Mauritius a lot. This is the new Lightwave Surf Shape 5.8. Really a popular size, 5.8. You know, um, some cottage use a really small 5.3, maybe, 6.2. But this is a size that a lot of people really agreed on, so we went with that. The um, one thing different about ours is the quad fin. This is getting more and more popular. The quad fin is a lot faster in a straight line than the thruster fin. Thruster in the middle gives you some drag. So um, that, we developed our new foot straps over in Bangkok this year. These are the new surf foot straps. Has a little Velcro tab that goes over, keep everything from flapping up. Really adjustable. You can adjust the uh, instep angle as well because it's got two points of adjustment, so you can adjust one side, change the angle if you want. That's good for the twin tip boards too. It's got the um, three-piece jive pad, so if you want uh, the changes his feet on the directional, which does take some skill, you're not going to slip off here, you know? Good <laughs> it takes grip. takes a little skill, huh? Yes, it does. Yes, I'm it fine. does, I know. <laughs> it's got the um, um, toe grip, arch support on the pads, the bump, down the center, so it gives you a nice grip. And it's all uh, EPS, epoxy, and wood veneer construction. So nice and tough. It's not the light, lightest surfboard, but I mean, it's reasonable. See? It and you won't, not uh, it's not too bad, you know? But uh, you won't be snapping it the first time, you know? If you make them too light, they're gonna snap, you're gonna have problems, so. That's true. All right, take us to the next board. The Rasta Pro LE. <laughs> We're just digging your boards. Got it. <laughs> All right. Rust Pro LE. This is uh, returning again from uh, 2007, but this is kind of a limited edition graphic we're doing. One thing we changed for this year is the strap and pad setup. You did a little review on them earlier. Yes, sir. Now we've got three slots, so you can actually change your duck foot angle. If you're a light rider, needs more rail pressure, you can move this back to the to the rail a little bit more. Um, this is a similar type as the surf strap. A tab to keep everything from flopping open in heavy conditions, you know. And the dual adjustment here. So you can change your instep angle if you want. It'll go about from a women's seven up to about a men's 14. That's actually new since I saw them. Yeah, these are all new here. This has been modified from what from what I sent you. Yeah, we, we just did early. a we just did a review on these. So whoever sees the review in the latest magazine realize there's some some new uh, technology. So these come in a 130, a 133, and a 137. It's kind of our mainstay um, twin tip regular board. It's the surfboard, and then this this is light wind board. Whew, that thing is big. That thing's as big as me, dude. Which isn't saying much, but now for, the, <laughs> for the show, we only came out with we only had the 161 by 44. We're gonna also have a uh, 156 and a 143. Um, this has got the parabolic arc, really wide on the tips. For our San Diego conditions, this is what you need. It's a wood core, nice and flexy. But uh, I wouldn't ride Mauritius surf with this thing, you know. This is more like a flat water big guy, beginner board, or also has good applications to racing. We really want to get up wind, make the mark. People are using oversized boards. Good racing board, too. That thing is huge. How, how, wing. How, how big is that thing? This is a 161 by 44. Yeah, that's a big boy board. Yeah. And uh, so now let's talk about some of your kites. Okay. Well, we've taken another step further in 08 with a V-Sonic. I got the, the V on the, the nose there, kind of like a parrot's beak. What this does, it does a couple of things. 
If you look at the nose and the tail, they both have quite some points. Oh, wow. And what that does is it makes the center of your kite low aspect ratio, grunty, a lot of pull in the low wind, you know, low end of the range, but the wing tips are still high aspect, which is where you get your drag on the wing tip. When the kite's flying through the air, the wing tips are just offering drag, really. Whereas the center of your canopy is where all the performance and pull is. Well, we kind of combine a low aspect and a high aspect height in the same thing. And it really makes it pivot more like our wave kite. Instead of a bow kite feel, it has more of a sea kite feel. It's, it's pretty amazing. It really pivots around that center section. So, line. is this the first time you guys have released this? I mean, like, this is the first <laughs> yeah, time people are seeing this. This is the first one in the U.S. We had one in July. We were testing it in Mauritius at our distributor meeting. That's awesome. And Matt Pendle, the designer, wanted to keep it until 2009. But after seven different distributors tried it, we all loved it so much better than even the, the 07 Sonic that um, had to, had we to had to do out. it. We had to bring it out. All right. So the, a, a secondary thing that's really nice about the front V is it acts like a five line without the line. When you're relaunching, if your kite crashes straight downwind and it's pulling you on your chest straight down, the V sticks into the water, stops the kite from slipping. And you just like take two strokes towards it and it falls on its back. So it really helps the relaunch. It really helps the relaunch, the V. It's a fifth line kite without the V. <coughs> right. You know how the fifth line you have to pull it towards you? Well, this one you just take a couple strokes and the kite really stops in the water with that V and falls right over on its back. Awesome. And of course, we got the, um, the KPO bridle, which we invented last year and uh, see it on a lot of kites now. But uh, ours is adjustable. You can actually change the pivot point of the kite by moving this V right here fore and aft. If you have it in the front, your kite, the center of effort is going to be the leading edge and it's going to sheet much like a mainsail on a boat. You have to pull the back of the kite down to keep the power and therefore you get some bar pressure. I see. If you move this back, the kite is more balanced like this on the front lines. All your power is right in your harness and there's very little bar pressure. So depending on what kind of rider you are, you can tune the kite to your own taste. And, uh, which is the first. What kind of kite, what kind of rider is this kite designed for? Really the the V Sonic is a design toward, more towards like the freestyle rider or the uh, cruiser guy that likes to go fast and throw a big hang time. Uh, whereas the Trix is more of the wave kite. But uh, the improvements on the V-Sonic have really improved its, its um, use in the waves. Awesome. Matt Pendles now is riding this one more, and all he rides is waves, so. Well, in Mauritius, There's it's, it's what you do. So, and then, so take us through the, the so you get, you're still going to have the other kites that the you. Tricks, yeah, this, is, this came about out about halfway through 07, the tricks. And so uh, we didn't really change that much. We beefed up some construction points a little bit. There's a little bit more of the Hypalon material. That's uh, this. Uh, they make whitewater rafts out of it. It's good for abrasion. We have added a little bit more of that, but we kept our same five-layer leading edge seam, triple stitched over the uh, seam intersections. It's really built bomber. A lot yeah, of Dacron. That, that uh, come on in here and pan in onto the the stitching on the on the kite because that that's a pretty bomb proof. Oh, here we go. And, and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I think we have the most bomber leading edge seam in the industry. You can see here that uh, it's actually five layers. Most kites are two layers. They just bring the two layers of Dacron together. Well, we sewed on an extra layer of Mark cloth here with a very thin thread, consequently a small hole you punch. Instead of having just one line of stitching with a thick thread, we spread the load out. So you don't have a, uh, you don't point load a bunch of big holes, which will blow your kite out. So they're, Construction second to none. Well, Dave, thanks for uh, thanks for your time today. I know you're a busy guy. <laughs> right on, thanks, Ryan. You, you bet, I had to wrestle him away from a lot of people, but tell us what you think of uh, Expo 2008. Expo 2008. I think it's the best turnout so far. All the companies made it. It's good to see everybody come back together. You know, we're all under the same roof. That's good.